な。So I wanted to make a video about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and I wasn't really sure what type of video to make because the review doesn't make sense, the game's a couple of years old and no one's going to care or read about that. But what I thought, I thought I'd just share my journey through Sekiro. I do love the Bloodborne and uh, Dark Souls games, but there's something about Sekiro that really drew me in, but for some reason I didn't want to play it or I didn't care. And then it got all these Game of the Year awards, and I'm like, oh man, this game, this game must be good. But then for whatever reason, I don't know, it just dropped off my radar. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'll pick it up one day when it's really cheap, when it's under 50 bucks. And I kept looking and it never appeared physically on sale anywhere and then it turns out pretty much all the copies in Australia were sold out. And then you know, eventually, what's the new game? Elden Ring? Elden Ring comes out and there must be a sale on From Software games and it's finally 50% off digitally and that's $49. It's still a lot but nah, it's not really. This game, this game is worth full price. So, downloaded it. You know, Nick has played this game before, he never got uh, all the way through it, and he kept saying how lack of fun he was actually having, like how frustrating, frustratingly difficult it was, and he just, he just wasn't having fun, and that, that just made me want to play even more. But anyway, so eventually, you know, I've got the game, I play it, get through the first couple, like, first boss or second boss, and I'm like, oh my god, this game is so hard and just so difficult like what have i done nick was right but you know me and nick we just have this we have this little rivalry obviously we've got a whole channel about it and i just wanted to make sure i'm like nah nick you're wrong i'm right this game's awesome so i got through a couple bosses and then i just you know hit a hit a wall hit a roadblock and then i'm like oh, man okay what do i do so I look up some guides and they go, oh, you can use this power against this boss. But this power is located in a different area, so go go find that. So eventually, you know, I get my little flamethrower and then I take down the big uh, giant. And I'm like, oh, okay, this game's not too bad. But then, then, there's, then there's another boss. And then I just try and I die and I try and I die. <sighs> But then eventually, you know, something clicks, and I get through. I get through that boss after enough trial and error. So I kill. I think. I think I killed the very first, the big main boss, the guy on the horseback. Oni Oniwa, Oniwa the Great or something. Anyway, the guy that's on a horse. Eventually, I killed him. And then right after that is another boss, a bull, a Taurus, that's on fire. And before you can even realize what's happening, you're dead. And I'm just like, oh man, this game is frustrating. You don't even get a chance to try and find out what the boss's attack patterns are and just how to kill them. And I'm like, that's it. You know, I'm done looking at the guides and the, hint, the hints and tips. I am just going straight for the YouTube tutorials. And like, it's pretty much the same thing. Instead of getting into battle, dying. At least you can watch the video and you can see the enemy attack patterns. The YouTube PS personal will obviously give you tips and like how to defeat the boss, but it's not still not an easy mode. You have to do it as the player. So I decided I had no, quar no qualms, no quarries about looking at YouTube guides on how to defeat every boss. And you know what? I feel like that was a valuable use of my time. Instead of dying again and again and again, look at this video, see how the enemy works, then attack them. And then win! And then winning! Winning against the boss when you've died so many times 
It's just so, so satisfying. Like, oh, it's the best. So eventually, you know, I get more and more into this game and I learn how to deflect enemy attacks and it just feels so good to keep parrying them and weakening their stamina until then you do the final death strike. And my god, the death strike is just so, so satisfying. Just that sound. Jab. Listen to it again and again. See all those same, same animations, different animations. Of just all these satisfying ways to kill regular enemies and kill the boss and finally uh, give it to them. I think what also struck me as like just amazing about this game is you know if you can be stuck on a boss but there's other places you can explore and exploring is just a wonderful thing like sure i picked up tons of items i never end up using because you never know you might need them one day but you'd explore and you'd either find a new boss you'd kill it you'd get more health or you'd find some sort of little power up that'd make your life kind of easier and then just I think the world design is just so so incredible like you can walk over here and like you see this bridge in the distance and then eventually you go somewhere else go up this rocky path and then like oh i'm on that bridge anyway there's a giant boss on the bridge or a little boss on the bridge and then you go somewhere else and you on the top of this mountain you're like oh there's that bridge i was just over i'm like and just the whole world is connected and just being able to see places everywhere you've been in this interconnected intertwined environment it's just it's inc it's incredible and i just oh, i really really appreciated it without question i accept its power i think what i like the most is obviously it's just the combat the combat is so excellent and really you've just got one basic sword attack and a parry and a dodge like, there's a different combination of everything, but I really enjoyed that system. There's a whole other system about your super duper mechanical shinobi arm, and that was cool, that was interesting, but what I didn't like is the powers on the arm, and you got so many different powers. Flamethrowers, shurikens, umbrellas, axes, like, they're cool stuff, but it was a limited resource on how many times you could use them, and you could either buy the currency or you could earn it from killing enemies. But what made it really annoying is like killing regular enemies is fine. You could use the superpower, you could, I could use my axe, kill an enemy, and you'd get a token back to use the item again. But when it came to bosses, I felt like they were kind of useless because you would go to a boss and you would die and you'd use up all your tokens for these special shinobi uh, arts. But then, you know, you try again and then all of a sudden, oh, hey, I don't have many of the tokens left because you've only got like 15 ish you can use at a time and then they deplete and then you sure you have some in storage but then they disappear because you fought the boss and then they disappear again and then you all of a sudden you end up with zero tokens so you can't use all the shinobi powers i found that that was really sucky and you can buy them but the cost becomes more and more and it just becomes ridiculous so it's just like oh that's one thing i found actually quite frustrating because there are all these cool powers but you can't you don't have the time or ability to use them when you need them the most. What it means is you just couldn't try out different playstyles. So and I ended up fighting up most bosses just using the sword and deflecting and dodging and parrying. Like, that was it. One of the other aspects I think I enjoyed the most about the game is really you just have one playstyle. Like, everything you get makes you better. You don't really have to make an actual choice. You don't have to choose what statistics, uh, what area you want to level up. You, the player, you just get more health. Your sword gets better. You get better at attacking. You don't have to choose. I mean, there are some choices. There's a giant skill tree, and that's really satisfying to use because, again, you just get better, but you just got to choose what sort of area or path you want to take. 
but it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm making the wrong choice. You're just always making a right choice for you. So when I got halfway through the game, I killed all these extra bosses because I missed like the key central area, which I think was actually pretty cool. But then by the, you know, once I got halfway, I killed the halfway boss. The game sort of takes a little bit of turn and you sort of have to revisit a lot of areas. And that's where I got to the point where I'm like, yeah, come on, like, let's do this. I could destroy these bosses or whoever's in my way. And then just <laughs> that feeling of going, <laughs> The feeling of going, oh man, I am so scared, I need to look up this YouTube tutorial on how to kill this boss, to just being like, come on, let, let, let's do it, I can take it, like, oh man, like, you the player just getting better, just, oh, just oh so satisfying. You know, this is a From Software game, so things are cryptic, you know, like I said at the start, I have no problems looking up YouTube tutorials or guides or figuring out what to do next. I did that until I make sure I got the good ending, and then... You know, before I get the good ending, I've got to get to the actual final boss. And I just spent so many of my lunch times trying and dying, trying and dying. Like, get used to the red screen. Like, that kanji of death symbol is ingrained into my memory. And I died so, so, so many times. But, you know, I kept coming back. I, I couldn't stop. Like, when I finally defeated the final boss on his fourth stage, like, I screamed and squealed in victory. Like, ah, oh, like, yes! I finally did it. And then, you know, I didn't want to stop because I ended up playing New Game Plus to capture all this footage. And it turns out this 50 hour game uh, you can actually beat in like probably eight hours or less and then you know at what point do I stop because there's different endings to get hidden bosses and I did most of that I'll get there I'll get the platinum one day but you know but now I gotta stop because you know everyone else in the world is playing Elden Ring so I might have to move on to that to learn to die die and die again Anyway, that was my journey through Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Thanks for coming along and ride for everybody. If you got this far, you know, give us a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe. Nick and Jeff were pretty cool. Maybe. Probably not. But anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.